Um, I'd like to turn to our next speaker. There are few British brands that are as international or as uh, successful uh, as HSBC. Uh, and so it gives me great pleasure, uh, particularly given that I used to work at HSBC, uh, to uh, introduce our next speaker, Ian Stewart, the CEO of HSBC UK. Ian, please welcome you into the stage. Miles, thank you very much. And the first thing we should never do is lose talent. What were we thinking about, Miles? <laughs> and anyway, good morning, everyone. And um, thank you for joining us this morning. It is a privilege to be asked to speak here today. A speech I am delighted to tell you has not been prepared by chat GPT. It doesn't have a Scottish version, but I'm sure there's one coming soon. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ian Stewart. I'm the chief executive of HSBC UK. A bank, it's actually headquartered, the UK is headquartered in Birmingham that supports around 15 million customers all around the UK. And that includes 800,000 businesses from sole traders to international conglomerates. And that is my background, is on commercial banking. Now, as some of you might have seen in the news last month, it's a portfolio that is growing. Um, we've just got bigger through the acquisition of Silicon Valley Bank UK, which brings some of the most exciting technology and life sciences businesses to our network. Now, I haven't quite cracked the training shoes to work yet, but I'm sure it will come. But I'm going to touch on Silicon Valley Bank a little bit later in my speech. Now, of course, the UK Bank is just part of a much larger network, which is HSBC Global Bank. We've got operations in more than 60 markets. It's an incredible network. It gives us access to about 85% of the global international trade flows. And that gives us unique insights into the movement of goods and services across the world every day. But I would highlight the UK is critical to HSBC as a group. Financially, the UK is a major contributor to the group. But geographically, it's the location of our group headquarters, and we are absolutely committed to that. And that also sets the mindset for what we're trying to do as a group. And that really is about opening up a world of opportunity for our clients. And that's very much aligned with what I see, and, and Anne's already just touched on that, is the ambitions that we should have as a bank, and hopefully for a lot of people in this room, crucial that we open up these opportunities. So I really want to touch on three topics this morning. The first is the economic outlook in the UK and, and globally. Secondly, the opportunities for international growth. And third, why the effective public-private partnership is critical to making the most of the opportunities. So let me start with the economic outlook. And I don't think I need to tell anyone in this room that the economic backdrop today is challenging. So for businesses in the UK, Brexit has been a challenge. And that has given way to COVID, which in turn has given way to low growth, high interest rates, supply chain disruption, and a persistently tight labour market. And there are global headwinds too. COVID was a global pandemic. The impact that it's had has been significant. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and its various economic and geopolitical impacts of which we're still feeling effects of today and will feel for some time. There's continued monetary tightening and economic nationalism, which can create trade frictions and make it harder to do business across borders. So with that pretty pessimistic outlook, why do I remain optimistic? Now, cautionary note here, I am that optimistic Scottish person. There's not many of us, <laughs> but I am that person. But let me try and explain my optimism in three areas. First, the resilience of UK business is quite incredible. And I'm fortunate to be in this industry for 43 years, and it never ceases to amaze me. And I was just with a customer earlier this morning who was really punching forward, saying, we've got a real opportunity to expand. And that is typical of many UK businesses today, quietly getting on and running their businesses. 
The second thing is the opportunities that exist for growth are exceptional, both at home and abroad, not least in the new technologies that will underpin our future success as a country. The opportunities in net zero alone, and I'm passionate about net zero, are substantial and ready-made for the many entrepreneurial business people in the UK today. And third, and I think this is really important because I think we can talk it down, I think the outlook for global trade is actually much more positive than often reported. So let me just give you a few examples and bring that to life. The supply chain bottlenecks that have really hampered business over the last few years have gone. They have unwound. Shipping delays are reducing. And the transportation costs, and when I talk about transportation costs, I'm really talking about container costs, are back to pre-pandemic levels. And intra-regional trade, and this is the bit where I think we talk about the negatives, but we don't talk about the positives. Inter-regional trade is booming, especially in Asia, where regional trade agreements like the RCEP and the CPTPP, and I'll come back to that later, should really encourage greater integration. And when you get to talk about digital data, especially in the services industry, they're all expanding rapidly. Now, I tried to humour it a little bit when I said chat and GPT earlier. But let me tell you, we weren't talking about chat GPT six months ago. Chat GPT really got going in December last year, and here we are six months later, and it's dominating the conversation. And where will AI go in the next few years? Now, a little bit of a health warning. I did some research on this. I'm cheating a little bit. I listened to a podcast. Um, <laughs> but it was a really interesting podcast talking about first mover advantage. And I'm a great believer in being a fast follower. I quite like other people making the mistakes first and then following in, but the skill is to be a fast follower. Google is the largest search engine in the world today. They were two years behind the first to market. I think when you're in pharmaceuticals, being first to market is actually quite important, but for most of the rest of us, being a really good fast follower is important. Let me talk about opportunities for growth. Now this admittedly, is quite a tricky operating environment to navigate. So how do we see businesses responding? And then you might think the natural reaction is to hunker down, let's play it really cautiously, concentrate on your home markets. But as the data out today highlights, being wider, more expansive will work. So I think, our, certainly our UK customers at the moment, I'm going to share some data in a second, investing in international markets not only de-risks your business, but really energizes growth. So we did some customer research in November last year, which seems like ancient history right now, but let me just share some of the data with you. So 2,100 customers took part, so it was meaningful. Turnover between 100,000 and 1 billion pounds. And 78% of these customers, which I think is a high number, were targeting growth. They were not hunkering down. They were targeting growth. That number rose to 86% for companies that had international sales. And I think Anne's already touched on that. International gives you an expansive outlook. So it clearly shows the positive link between international growth and overall business performance. But we also know that businesses that export are generally more profitable, more productive, and they diversify their risk by gaining access to new markets. Again, I'll come back to that. The other interesting thing in some of the data was 64% of businesses were positive about their trading prospects. And if you read the press, you would think the number of people that were positive would be sort of 20, 25%. People can see the opportunities. 53% of customers with international sales said they felt the international side of their business was critical to their growth plan. And again, I don't think anybody would be surprised about that. One interesting piece of data. Despite all the challenges of the UK and the EU, 58% of our customers, out of a pretty large population, were looking to expand sales to the EU bloc. I was a big fan of staying in the union. I thought it was important for trade. I am delighted that 58% of our businesses in the UK are starting to find ways 
to increase trade with the EU. But there's a lot more to life than the EU. Other regions targeted for growth include North America, the Middle East, Southeast Asia and North Africa. And there are some huge pockets of growth, many fast moving markets. And I had the privilege of being in Saudi Arabia in January. I was there for a week. And if you think you've seen fast growth, go and spend a week in Saudi Arabia because it is off the charts. The scale of the projects, the infrastructure, are absolutely incredible. All there for UK businesses to thrive in. Now, I know that many of these markets are being actively considered by the UK as part of the trade agenda, either through free trade agreements or through efforts to improve access to the markets. And I think it's interesting in the data that's just been supplied to you this morning, just on the back of the summary sheet, businesses want easier access to the markets. They want to de-risk access to the markets. We welcome all of this, and especially the UK's decision to join the CPTPP trade agreement. And I've been on record on this. I personally believe this is a really important green light to UK companies to double down on their trade with some of the fastest growing markets in the Asia Pacific. And on technologies, again, I touched on this earlier, one of the big trends we see is on climate transition, where our customers from multinational energy companies to manufacturers of offshore wind turbines, local businesses, retrofitting homes, look at the net zero as a once in a generation opportunity. I can tell you today, HSBC, we are all in on this transition. And I'm now looking at a plan that's going out over 20 years to really make us an important player in this market. And I don't mind sharing a story. Last week, a customer came in to see me and he was talking about an electric ship. If somebody had said to me a couple of years ago there'd be an electric ship, I would have thought, gee whiz, he's smoking something. But this plan for two electric ships is really incredible. We will do that deal. But it tests us as well, because if you're going to finance ships, you're into 20 year funding. And these are things we've got to adapt. So we are all in. Which brings me to the next point, which is how do we make it happen? It's okay coming to speak at these events. It's okay turning up and thinking about it. But how do we make it happen? And I think it's a key question for today's conference. How do we unlock these international opportunities? How do we make it happen? And I think at the heart of the answer is really good, effective public-private partnerships with businesses and government working hand in hand to support companies to realize their international ambitions. Again, it's already been mentioned this morning, giving businesses the confidence to step out. It's a huge issue. So what does that mean in practice if you're an SME? Well, I think it starts with all of us, and I mean all of us, making sure that our customers understand the support that is already available. And it's interesting, because when I go back to the survey that we did, 58% of the businesses who are already trading internationally hadn't used any, hadn't used one piece of the government-backed services available to them. Now, that really shows entrepreneurialism, However, I think it is a very big missed opportunity as the range of support is really impressive and growing. So let me give you some examples. There is a very good innovative trade finance package available through UK Export Finance. There's a new export support service which acts as a one-stop shop for SMEs needing market advice and introductions. There's a dedicated office for investment to help large, strategic investors manage the Whitehall machinery. And if any of you have been through that machinery, you know you need to navigate. And there's also a willingness to look at policy levers available to drive growth, like prior prioritizing business mobility, to ensure companies have access to the global talent that they need to create new services and meet the needs of customers around the world. And this is so important for global service companies like HSBC. We need access to that as much as anybody else. But it can't just be government. I think if we just wait on government, then we really are going to miss the opportunity. I think this is business and government working together. 
And I think it's people in this room really focusing in on the opportunity and unlocking that opportunity. We must play our part. So HSBC UK, the part of the bank that I run, we are doing our bit. We've got a dedicated £15 billion SME lending scheme. It was first launched in 2014. And two billion of that is ring-fenced to support international scale-ups. And we're also very proud to be the largest bank partnering UKEF, playing our part in the expansion of their offer with the rollout of the new export development guarantee and the general export facility. All very important for expansive businesses. However, I think it's much wider than just banking. It has to be beyond the simple provision of products and services because there's a critical role we can all play in partnership with government. And that is to reach the widest number of companies and help them. So what does that mean? Certainly working with government to explain the benefits of free trade agreements and encourage greater uptake with SMEs. The large corporates have got this sussed. It really is an opportunity for SMEs. I think partnering with government to educate companies on the opportunities for UK firms to get into some of these world's fastest growing markets, and as we've already touched on, give them the confidence to take the step. And at the same time, inward investment, already been discussed this morning, it is critical to the future of UK PLC. So we must, must support the inward investment ambitions and work alongside government to showcase the very best of the UK. And let me assure you, I'm in a privileged position. I see it every day working with UK businesses. We've got much to talk about. One final thought. When we get this partnership right, we give businesses the confidence to take those calculated risks that we know are inherent when looking to grow, especially in international markets. And that's not just true of SMEs and entrepreneurs. Let me go back to that weekend in March when an opportunity came across our desk, HSBC. And I'm really grateful to the close partnership we had with authorities in the UK and the US, the tireless efforts of our people, and I know we've had some criticism on five hours of due diligence, but sometimes you just have to be brave. Nobody's asked me about the quality of the due diligence we did, which was exceptional, but at some point, the papers came on my desk, and it's, is, it, is it go? Or is it no go? And I thought it was a go. And I hope that little bit of bravery serves us very, very well. And I hope it serves the 4,000 customers that we've brought in very well. The one person that definitely helped was the UK taxpayer. So sometimes a little bit of bravery, and I might, I might be here in two or, year, two or three years' time explaining that bravery, or I might not. <laughs> but I hope the bravery pays off. So let me conclude. The message I want to leave with you today, of course the outlook is challenging. It would be naive to say anything else. But do not underestimate the opportunities for international growth. They are plentiful. And if we work together, we can unlock them. And I say that because I passionately believe it is going to take partnership to create the conditions for success. So that private finance and business investment underpinned by coherent policy and regulation, all pulling in the same direction. And if we all do that, for the same end, we will help drive growth and prosperity to all parts of the UK. With that in mind, I wish you all a very thoughtful, successful conference. Thank you very much. Ian, thank you very much uh, indeed for that, and uh, terrific uh, to hear about the survey that HSBC uh, has done, uh, and great to get a corrective what is sometimes uh, an overly pessimistic view, uh, and I very much share uh, your optimism about the UK over the long term and your points around CPTPP, which I think will be a terrific boon for the UK over the long term.